Uh, good evening, my fellow TRs. This is Target Individual CJBK. So, um, as always, you know it's the weekend. And the perps and, and all the, you know, electronic handlers, you know, they congregate more during the weekend and they, you know, gather together to try to see if they can inflict as much pain as they could, you know, or torment as they could, you know, because I guess they're all from their, their normal jobs. And, um, it's now... Two, let me guess, two thirteen a.m. Saturday, February twenty six, two thirteen a.m. And uh, I just woke up from one of their uh, dream manipulations, right? And um. So it's already um, like, OK, so one thing that I've learned is that they can basically um, they can call they can create coded up projected um, dreams and implant them into, you know, people's minds. Um, you can actually look up this uh, this you can actually look this stuff up on, you know, online type in. um Imp implanted dreams um yeah type in implanted dreams i forgot the name of the the uh, scientists i think they're like japanese or chinese scientists they have uh found ways to actually um code up um simulated uh you know um environments and then be able to transmit it into a person's chain. All of this is using, um, you know, uh, very sophisticated algorithms, um, EEG, fMRI, um, things of that sort. And then here's what they did, right? I could tell they went digging. <laughs> so, like we all know, we're all connected to, uh, we're all, you know, basically connected to this cloud and, you know, this cloud reads our, um, our electrical impulses, um, through the, um, electro, man-made electromagnetic fields and, the you know, the man-made electromagnetic field that basically reads our electrical impulses in the brain. The electrical impulses in the brain contains, you know, a lot of data and information. Um, so every thought, memory, image, word, song, whatever it is, it's all encoded in the electrical impulses in our brain. So what they did was <laughs> they found one of the few things that I am like, I'm still embarrassed to say, and even to this day, I don't even, I don't, I don't like the, the sight of his face, but they went in my, they went in my memory and seen that I am terrified of the, the night, well, the, you know, 90s horror flick, you know, cult, um, favorite, um, one of the cult favorites, Candyman. So, and I'm getting chills when I when I when I say this. So what they did was they created a simulated uh, environment where I don't even know the people I was in the room with. It was like it was like four of us, and they basically made it so that um, what's gonna call it? They made it so that it looked like. For whatever reason, uh, we were just in this room, and I think somehow we were just bound to a couch. I have no idea. And um, next thing you know, it seemed like we were to be sacrifices to um, Candyman. <laughs> and 
I'm just like, and then there, there's this one part where, like, I think, I don't know, maybe I, I, I was trying to, like, I guess, stand up and get away or whatever, but I just remember seeing, like, Candyman, he takes his hook, and he, like, swings, and then hooks it into, like, I think either my left or right leg, and then he, like, pulls me, pulls me down onto the couch. I think I was, like, floating or something like that, and then he, like, swings and Grab, like he hooks his hook into my leg and then pulls me down to the couch and then I remember at one point I was just sitting on the couch I'm like crying and then next thing you know um Candyman like disappears and then I'm looking around and I'm like oh my goodness he disappeared where did he go where did he go Cause he was just standing. He was just standing like like a few feet in front of us, and then for whatever reason, for whatever reason, a woman sitting two persons over from me. She's talking to somebody else that's sitting to the right of me, and she says something along the lines of, "Um, they don't." The transaction doesn't get um, something about the tran the uh, transaction doesn't um, get confirmed until um, until we are dead or something like that. It had something to do with money or some type of financial um, payment or transaction. Now I remember reading about how. Uh, well, let me you know continue with this part. So. At some point, um, right, and I and I'm sitting on the couch thinking to myself, why are they talking about money, or why are they talking about transactions, like like a like a, a monetary transaction? So I thought that was weird. Then all of a sudden, I'm sitting on the couch, and then I'm looking around, and then all of a sudden I start to feel like this thing, like like something pointy trying to push through the back of my neck. And then, you know, I take my right hand and I'm like holding it against my, you know, holding it against my neck. And then all of a sudden, um, it's almost that it's almost as if like, <laughs> it's almost as if like I kind of knew what to do. So it was like I was, I, I took my right hand and I placed it against my throat and then I started remembering my Qigong exercise. So I was using like my body's you know, um, magnetic force, I guess, to try to push back against whatever was, well, I mean, I guess I'm thinking, you know, knowing how Candyman kills, Candyman will, you know, he comes up behind you and he forces his hook, you know, through you from behind you. And then it was like, it was the strangest thing because it almost felt like my heart was trying to have a heart attack or something like that. And... I'm pushing now that now that you know using frequencies to attack my um my LCL on my um my left knee. So it was like they were trying to he it was like Candyman was trying to push his his hook through the back of my neck, but at the same time I was feeling my chest. Something was happening with my chest. So then all of a sudden, Candyman appears in front of me again like he appears like at least like 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 a good 10 12 feet in front of me and it almost looked like he was trying to like force himself into my like like i don't know it was almost like he was trying to force himself back behind me but he kept flickering like he was a hologram <laughs> And which McCoy and the thing was the, the the part that gets me was at some point I realized, wait a minute, this is working. Then I realized it's all in my head. So what I started to do, I, I calmed myself down. I stopped straining so much. Then I realized lucid dream. And then I did the, the, the funny thing, the funniest thing I did was I remember taking my right hand, holding it up against Candyman's face, and I just like, <laughs> I just literally like closed my fingers, <laughs> like it was like my hands were spread out, and it was almost like I took 
my my fingers and I just said bloop and then I, I, I closed them down. All of a sudden Candyman disappeared and then I just woke up from my from my lucid dream and then I was like damn pointing to the ceiling like that was a good one. <laughs> So these, remember, you got to remember that lucid dreams are, you know, they're meant to feel as real as possible because they're projected, they're basically projected holograms to, you know, um, involve all parts of your, um, or most parts of your senses, you know, your, 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 um, Sense your 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 sense of feel, sound, um, touch things of that you know yeah, all of your senses just about. But you also got to remember you can actually control the things that they try to project into your mind. All of this, and then shortly, and then shortly after waking up, I start to feel like this weird you know pain in my my chest. And then right now I have like a, um, like there's this like almost tingling numbness in my right hand. It's, it's going from my chest to all the way down my right arm and into my right hand. So I was like, let me record this in case I die at some point because they tried to scare me to death in, in a dream. So, <laughs> um, yeah, always remember... Uh, when you begin to have what you think is a dream while you're sleeping, uh, most of the time you got to remember a lucid dream doesn't necessarily mean you're fully asleep. It's like you're it's like you're kind of asleep, but you're not you're not REM sleep. You're like you're you're still you're partly awake, but you're in like this this I forgot what that brainwave activity is, but you're like somewhere in between sleep and awake. And that's how they, you know, manipulate you, you know, your, your, your mind, you know, so, oh, it, and it was, it was, it was tough because I still do not like the side of candy, man. And that one, that was a good one. That was a good one. Oh, and I'm like, I know my handlers, my handlers look right up there on 1490 boom. You know, so I already know because um, they're the ones who did the brain mapping on me because since I was living in that building over there anyway. So, um, yeah, so uh, what you gonna call it? Um, man, that was a good one because it was like it was like at some point in the gym, I was like, wait a minute, Chris. <laughs> You know Candyman isn't real, so why are you feeling it? And then I was like, ah, dream manipulation, you know, lucid dreams. So, um, yeah, uh, I gotta, they always fuck with me when I gotta get up for work. And it's the most annoying thing, you know. But everything is slowly coming to light, though. You know, as soon as the CIA can finally give up them details about their secret program of how they get all this bulk data, you know, and who they contract out to to, you know, uh, use these devices that they, you know, gave out to the, I guess, the street. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I'm not 100% certain, but the... the but the technology that they're using, it sounds very, you know, advanced, like stuff like that the NSA, CIA would have, you know, that's, you know, close to like the MK Ultra, Operation Stellar Wind, and, and Project Blue Beam type stuff, you know. Um, but anyway, um, I'll get at y'all later. I'm trying to see if I could collect myself so I can get up for work. Remember, take life one breath, one thought, one step, one day at a time. Peace.